Down to Earth, brought to you in association with the Musée de l'Homme. watching Down to Earth with Marie Dundas and Marina Birch. This week we're shining a light on Senegal in a special episode focused on energy in Africa. Only three out of five households have access to electricity in the country. But it's symbolic of a reality that is stunting development in the world's fastest growing continent. Senegal gets an impressive nine months of uninterrupted sunshine every year, and yet solar technology is still finding its feet. Today, much hope and money rest on the success of what is known as nano grids, small independent energy systems that power a few homes. The team from Down to Earth went to rural Senegal to discover how it works. Early morning on the Casamance River. Thomas Samuel is heading downstream to New Moon, a village situated five hours away and reached only by dugout canoe. He's bringing electricity. I'm not a charity worker, I'm a social entrepreneur. This is the first of 300 villages that we're going to supply with electricity. We do business and it has a positive impact on the local population. Thomas came here for the first time by chance 10 years ago during a round the world trip. Now he says New Moon feels like home. Ça va, toi? Ça va, bien. The village is far removed from the electricity grid, a challenge for government officials, but a unique business opportunity for Thomas. 12 families now have lighting in their homes thanks to this solar street lamp that provides electricity to nearby houses, a system also known as a nano grid. This is where I live. This is a wire that supplies my house. The new technology is the result of years of research. Here, everything gets wet during winter. So you need a system that's waterproof and also resistant to tropical heat. The battery inside the box is made of nickel. It's the only battery that has a lifespan of 10 years and needs no maintenance. Martine was one of the first people in the village to benefit from the system. She had to pay 30 euros for a house to be wired up. Here we have the nano grid with four lighting outlets. We've equipped the whole house with low energy LED bulbs. And here, you've got a USB port where you can charge any type of mobile phone. Before, we'd have to buy batteries for this lamp. And now you can just come to the house. And with a click, you switch on the light. It's easy. Before, I remember, we'd have dinner and we were all in here. There was an old kerosene lamp hanging from the ceiling. We could barely see what was on our plates. I mean, the food was good. Everything is so much better now. Thanks, Thomas, from Electricity. Thomas's business model is simple. Martin pays five euros a month. That's 20 cents per day instead of the usual 40 cents she would pay for kerosene. It's a prepaid system that's very common here in Africa. 
Without this card, you can't switch on the lights. It's like buying credit to top up your phone. It's a miracle, even for children. When you switch it on, they jump and scream with joy because they've never seen anything like it. It's the first time they've had lighting. Thomas develops the new technology here in Bordeaux, in the southwest of France. That's also where he started collecting funds to finance his project. He raised half a million euros thanks to a crowdfunding campaign, which saved him from having to borrow money from a bank. And he says investors also stand to benefit. Crowdfunding, especially for a project like ours, is a revolution. French investors lend us their money, and we're going to repay them with a 6% interest rate, which is more than what they'd get if they put their money in a bank. And the advantage for us is that the cost of borrowing is much lower than if we borrowed money directly from a Senegalese bank. It's not the first time entrepreneurs have tried to supply the village with electricity, but with limited success so far. Martin takes us on a tour, starting with a local hospital. Here's a maternity ward. Look at this. The doors are broken. There you have light bulbs, but no power. Here we use hurricane lamps for child delivery. But sometimes we have no oil. When that happens, we use a candle. It shouldn't be like this. Everyone has electricity. So why don't we have it? Look, this is where the solar panels are. We used it to clean them, but now they stopped working, so we gave up. What are you going to do with them? We can use them as sheds to protect us from the sun. In Diola, we say Kubontola. People deceive us for no reason. And now we think about Thomas. We hope he can do better than this. Martine isn't the only one in the village to pin her hopes on Thomas. Today, many have come to learn more about the project. Everyone who wants lighting in their homes will be equipped with the new system. Thomas expects his investment to be profitable in three to six years. His company provides free maintenance for all appliances and guarantees them for 10 years. Thomas has big plans for Senegal he wants to supply 300 villages with electricity by 2018. Suna Design Technology will soon be used by one of the most ambitious solar initiatives on the continent. The face of the project, US Senegalese rap star Akon, made famous thanks to hits like this. So Multi-millionaire musician has teamed up with two African associates to create Akon Lighting Africa. Together, they believe they can offer cheap, accessible electricity to an unprecedented number of Africans. The Akon Lighting Africa program brings answers. Our solution? Equip millions of households in Africa with tailored solar energy systems through public-private partnerships. I care a lot about the electricity, mainly because, honestly, this, this problem existed when I was a child and I'm a, an adult now and it still exists. So something had to be done about it. We are three young Africans. For this challenge, it's only us Africans who can overcome it because no one will do it in our place. Just don't call them a charity. We spoke to the celebrity rapper and his partner, Samba Batali, to understand what's different about the way they're lighting Africa. Um, it's not a charity, it's strictly for profit. And the whole idea is to empower the people there, give them jobs, create jobs, opportunity for the people there to give them the power to be able to build you know, their own country, infrastructure, education, uh, agriculture, 
You name it, none of this can happen without power. So ultimately, power was the main choice to start with. In December 2015, the TRIO launched a solar academy specifically to train Africans. Yes, because as we saw earlier, Marie, that installing the technology is one problem, maintaining it is another. The main way to keep it lasting is to make sure that the people are the ones that build it. Because if they build it, they're not going to let it fall down. You know, and if, when they see the the magnitude of how much impact that it brings to, in their lives, they're going to want it to be around. It's no different from the cell phone. Although we want it to be young Africans who do the installation, because we have an unemployment problem in Africa, and so we want to create more jobs. We could import people to do the installation, but that's not the objective. In my homeland and I'm feeling so alive. See any African in my heart. With music, I want to be able to create a legacy. I want to be in a position to where I'm remembered for doing something outside of singing and dancing. And I think that energy will remember me forever, generations down to come, for what I've done for the African people. Yo, just listen up and believe me. Her dreams have the only cure. Of course, while we can produce more affordable and accessible energy, we can also use less. That's the idea behind a smartphone app built by three Senegalese. Sakanal app is designed to help users save electricity and drive down their energy bills. It's full of easy to understand tips and advice, such as unplugging appliances before bed or turning down the thermostat on your refrigerator. There is a function that's called simulate your energy consumption, which allows a family to estimate how much they would have to pay each month and then compare that with what they're paying right now. That brings us to the end of this week's show. Thanks for being with us. Thanks, Marina. Thanks, Mairead. Don't forget, we're happy to stay in contact. See you next week.